we'll start with Bitcoin and then we'll we'll kind of go from there real quick. I want to give a shout out to the sponsors of this stream. Uh, as you guys know, I'm working with Prime XBT. Love the exchange. It's one that I personally use. I do like that you can trade more than just crypto on there. With crypto as collateral, you can trade Forex, you can trade gold, you can trade silver, you can trade currencies, which is awesome. Great liquidity, great interface. Overall, happy to be back working with the Prime team. And if you use the code MAIN50, M A Y. Y N E five zero click the link in the description. You'll get 25% off of your trading fees, which is pretty awesome. Prime XBT. Let's go. All right. So it's going to be a big week. I think uh, we're either going to see Bitcoin and potentially altcoins have some much overdue relief, or perhaps we're going to see one more stab down first. So let's get right into it. So we'll start with Bitcoin. Now I want to be very clear. The high time frame Bitcoin chart still looks very bad. This is by no means very bullish. Like you're looking at the monthly here. We've got a huge monthly swing failure pattern here. So we took out this month's low, right? Traveled up, took out that month's high. And this looks to be like the range that we're gonna be in for the next while. Generally, when you're looking at a range, when the lows get taken, you generally are gonna target the mid range. And then if it reclaims the mid range, you're gonna target the range high. When the highs get taken, you target the mid range. If the mid range gets lost, you target the range low. That's how you generally are going to trade the range. So if you look at Bitcoin on a high time frame here, you're seeing a lot of people who have who have uh, brought this up recently being like, you know, I think I've seen Don Alt post about it. Obviously, we've seen the range master trader SZ post about it. We've seen our homie in the chat trader XO post about it. You see a lot of people talking about, you know, maybe we're just in some huge range and uh, we're going to range for the entire, you know, entirety of, of 2022. And it's going to be a big range between 30K and 60K. Personally, I have no problem with that. I think a lot of people are like, oh my God, some huge range. You know, that sounds awful. Like you want to know what's awful is this. I'll show you awful. It just shows you how, how little time a lot of people have been in the market when they're like, I can't imagine like a you know, a, a, a range for an entire year, that'd be awful. We're talking about a range on the monthly and weekly chart, a $30,000 range. So not only a range is piss easy to trade. And if you want to know how I trade ranges, I have a video titled range trading, type that in on YouTube. It's like an hour and a half video where I cover how I trade ranges. Uh, but it's a $30,000 range, which means there's going to be absolutely massive moves in either direction. And when we're at the range lows and bullish and Bitcoin catches a bid, even if it's going to make a lower high, there's going to be a period of time where altcoins go crazy as well. And when Bitcoin is near the range highs and it dumps, you're going to see altcoins shit the bed. There's going to be tons of volatility and opportunity in a huge $30,000 range. You want to know what torture is? This is torture. For those of my friends who were around in 2018 here, you think a thirty to sixty thousand dollar range is rough. This is a ten percent range that we were stuck in for months. This was brutal. Volatility on a day to day basis was awful. And you can go even further back here, you know, and say, okay, this range was all, but this this period of trading, we were trading on Bitmex here, and this was fucking brutal, man. This was brutal. So was this. Even though we were putting in the bottom here. Like trying to squeak out trades when look at these daily candles, how small they are. This was painful. Trading between 30 and 60,000 sounds like an awesome opportunity to play just level to level when Bitcoin is at the range lows. And if it's finding support, you go risk on with altcoins. When Bitcoin is at the range highs and it's showing weakness, you go risk off of altcoins and you short altcoins, you short Bitcoin, you short Ethereum. It's just gonna be on a massive scale. I think there's gonna be a lot of opportunity and uh, I think a lot of uh, money to be made if we do do something like this. Like I have no issue with something like this for the rest of the year. Really, I don't. Obviously, ideally, right? I would much rather us just go fucking vertical. Like who wouldn't want us to just go to 100K, right? Like if you own Bitcoin, the easiest conditions to trade are just a straight up uptrend because you don't. You, if you own Bitcoin, you don't even have to do anything, right? And you're making money. Range trading takes a little bit more skill right? Because you got to be able to play both directions. You got to be able to cut trades off and just not assume that when we get to the range high that we're going to break out, that we might just come back down, right? And now you've round tripped your long all the way back to entry. So a little bit more skill involved, but I think it's a great opportunity to learn whether or not we're going into a bear market. It doesn't matter so much to me, right? I'm a trader up or down. I'm going to be okay. The problem is, is many people have come into this market over the last two years and all they know is 
this, right? They were baptized by up only. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? I mean, everyone makes, everyone looks like a genius in a bull run, right? It's, it's easy, you buy something. If you wait long enough, you're gonna be up on it. But personally, myself and a lot of the traders I hang out with, right? We really sharpened our skills in the bear because you had to learn to cut your losses. You had to learn how to short. You had to learn how to flip your bias easily. Uh, you had to learn how to trade in rangy and shitty conditions as opposed to just a clear up or down trend. But I smashed the shit out of this bear market here, right? Like this is where I made a shitload of money that allowed me to really make it in this bull run. The money I made here that I was able to reinvest here and down here and on the way up is what helped me make it during this crazy run. It wasn't the money I made here. I fucking didn't handle this bull run amazingly, right? I did okay made money in the bear run, and then I knew what I was doing for the next one. So if you're worried about a bear market coming, I think you gotta think of it as opportunity. Don't think of it as, as um, something to be scared of, it's opportunity. The market can only go up, down, or sideways, and if you can trade all three of those directions, you got nothing to worry about. Obviously, if you're a holder, you know, a hodler, a bear market can be scary because, you know, maybe some of those bags that you bought that were up 2000% are going to retrace 80 or 90% from the highs. And that sounds horrifying, but it's very easy for hodlers to, in the uptrend, be like, oh, fuck trying to buy and sell. Just hold, just hold, just hodl. Hodlers always win. That's easy when everything is going up, right? But when the market is now retracing, are you still going to have that same confidence in your bags that even if it goes down 80 89% you're just gonna hold it what if it goes down 80% and it stays shitty for like two years what are you gonna do are you prepared to suffer massive drawdown for an extended period of time imagine you're a hodler of cardano you're telling people this is the new shit just buy and hold we're gonna be rich and then it fucking fully retraces the bull market move and then it stays in a very long sideways phase for literally two years are you prepared to hold through that because that, that comes with the territory, being a holder versus being someone who's more actively managing your investments. It's fine and dandy to tell people that, oh uh, yeah, all you have to do is hold and you would outperform a trader. It's like, okay, for sure. In the bull run, maybe you will and everything's going up. But what happens if Cardano does the same thing again and it retraces 90% and it's back at 30 cents and it stays at 30 cents for the next year or two? Are you prepared to have that same conviction? Personally, I'm not really scared if we're going into a bull market or going into a bear market. I don't really care. You know, I have crypto and cold storage that I'm not going to sell for a while. And how do I protect myself for downside? Well, when I'm trading, if we're in a bear market, I'm going to be shorting. Right? I'm gonna be shorting and that's gonna help hedge some losses that I'm taking on things that I hold spot in. But I've also set myself up well in terms of transitioning a lot to stable coins during this run up and during this run up. Did I catch the absolute top? No, it doesn't really matter. But me personally, as a trader, uh, I'm looking at my licking my chops at the opportunity to you know trade a huge range between here and here. Think of all the opportunities there'll be to get into longs on the way up here and then get into shorts on the way back down. Sounds like a lot of fun to me. I don't know about you. I do see this range, you know, that uh, we're all looking at here. It seems like everyone's looking at. It seems very reasonable to me that, you know, now that we sweat the range high, maybe we come down and sweep these lows. So looking at this on the weekly, if I had to guess what's gonna happen, the weekly closed just now. That is not a pretty looking weekly close. We have a brand new weekly order block here. Closed as an SFP of that low. So that's potentially bullish, but we broke this low. So realistically, if we're gonna get a bounce, right? The target for the bounce is this new weekly order block, which is confluent with the mid range. Can we poke higher and above it? Absolutely, but this would be the logical area for a bounce, right around 45, 46K as an initial target. And that also lines up with our yearly open and our lower time frame range, okay? So if we're gonna, if this is a temporary low, and we're gonna have a green week, let's say, your target is up into this weekly bearish order block. And then we look for reasons to potentially scale in shorts here, because the trend is down. So there's lower highs and lower lows, right? So the trend is down, so the expectation is eventually we make another lower low. Can that change? Can we just go up only from here? Obviously, lots of things can happen, but for now, this closes an SFP. If this is a temporary low, we're looking for a move back towards this order block, back towards that mid range is our first area of interest. But this is the high time frame range that I'm watching for the year, this big range here. So from this high to this low, deviated above, slightly broke the lows. So now that we've gone over the top, 
next target potentially is here high time frame i don't know if we go up first and then down right or if we go up a little and then down i don't know yet but that would be the logical target based on the way that this high time frame chart is looking so now zooming in looking at the daily we've got this daily range that we formed here after the big initial dump came up sfp would the high what did we do? We ran to the low. How is this any different than that weekly range that I just showed you where we, we had our initial high, there's 30K, there's 69K, and we're now here. How is this any different? It's not, right? It's just a range. And we ran the high, next target is the low. Ran the high, stopped at the mid range, lost the mid range, now we're at the low, right? So if we're able to get back within this range, target one, the mid range. We have our yearly open sitting at 46,200. We have this bearish daily order block that is formed here as well. We had one, two, three, four, five, six red daily candles in a row. So some relief would not be surprising, but we need to hold this range low here. But our first target would be up into this mid range, this daily order block, right? and the yearly open, which is at 46,200. This would be our target on longs if we're gonna get that relief that we're expecting here. Need to see that form early this week. I want the low to either already be in or I want the low to form very quickly, early in the week, ideally, if we're gonna have a green week. Uh, this also lines up with the mid range of that massive range, right? That big weekly range I had drawn out, the mid range is like 47 something. So it's all a lot of confluence right here for a target if we're gonna push higher. What else am I looking at here? We ran the lows of this, we ran the low of this. So we ran that low, we ran that low. There's one other set of lows here, right? This has all been run, this one. So this low has not been run yet. We also have this nice 12 hour order block that led to this rally. Boom, retest, run away. So obviously this is a critical level and we have a low sitting right there. So if we were to dive one more time down into here, I would look to be a buyer for the exact same play up into here, okay? The question is, are we already done moving down and we're gonna see the relief now and people who were waiting for sub 40K got front run, right? So did these people get front run who were looking to buy at you know, 39, five and 40? Or are we gonna have one more stab down and then we're gonna get that relief? Either way, I think sooner than later, we're gonna be trading back at 44, 45, 46,000, back up into the mid range here. The question is, is this the low here? We ran that range low. We ran the low from the other day. We made a higher high on the, on the low time frame here. Is this it? Or are we gonna have one more stab down and then the move up? So I've positioned myself for now that this is the low, right? So I took a long yesterday on Bitcoin, I posted what I was in, right? Someone commented, they're like, tell us what you're doing, up or down, and I was like, I'm long. And I longed Bitcoin, I posted all my positions, Bitcoin, Link, Luna, um, Sushi, and Adam. So I longed all of those, because basically what I was looking at here was, okay, we just ran this low, and then we reclaimed the range low. So I wanted to get risk on with some alts and I managed to catch some nice bounces because generally when you see Bitcoin trading at the range low, if it's gonna bounce, there's gonna be a lot of altcoins that are gonna bounce harder. And that's basically what I was playing. I was playing some of the stronger altcoins over the recent last little bit. And I managed to catch, like, I mean, Sushi went up 10% yesterday. Luna went up 10%, Adam went up 10%. Bitcoin itself, my entry was at like 40, 1900 right so i caught like a four four almost four percent three or four percent move there ethereum was up like six percent so i caught a really nice bounce play but what we want to see now is is continuation i want to see this break higher what i'm not liking effectively what we're seeing right now is we've got a new little mini range here on the hourly and we've run this high now so what i really want to see is effectively this range low hold and i want to see this low hold because we're putting in a potential, right? Like we got a low, a lower low, a higher low. This is like a classic setup that I use, that I always talk about. So I wanna see, and we've run this low here. So I wanna see, there's a little bit of a CME gap here. That's now been filled. We've got our bullish order block here at the range lows. So I, I, I'm long again. Um, I closed some of my longs here and I'm long again on Bitcoin from right here basically with a stop there. So I'm hoping that this, turns up from here 
and then we at the very least run these highs but i'd love to see us fill in some of this fair value gap that we have right here just a large void essentially down only price action so i want to see us hold here get above here and then trade into these highs and potentially up as high as here but it needs to hold this low if we lose this low right because we've swept this and then we've made a higher high so the logic is if this is a sweep of this low we've made a higher high this retest should hold because if it doesn't, if this low gets broken, I think we actually come out and take out these lows and then we potentially see a move into that gray box I was talking about here. So pretty critical area, I think, to focus on here for Bitcoin. I want to see this low hold. If we lose this low at 41,240, I'm cutting the long and I'll wait and I'll see if we get maybe one more stab down. But this is the area that I'm working in. We've got that high time frame range low here. So I'm looking for price to hold this low. This is what needs to be reclaimed if we're going to see a move to the mid range, right? If we lose this, come below here, guess what? We're trading down into here. And then I'll look again. I'll want to see some sort of move down into here and then a reclaim of this. Then I'll be getting interested in getting into longs back to here. And then if we flip that, eventually back into here. But for now, I'm in a long based on what I just explained here. Ran the low, broke the high. I want to see this low hold. And I want to see a move up at least to these kind of, you know, untapped highs here. Ideally up into here. We'll see though. I'm prepared for anything. My risk is managed. My stop is already set. So now I'm just waiting patiently. I'm going to let the market tell me what it wants to do. If it wants to go up, I think this is the area it goes up from. Could it potentially come down here and then still go up? Sure. But based on my experience with price action, after running this low, breaking that high, there's no reason for this low to get run if it's going higher. Uh, I believe if this low gets taken out, I think we'll likely make a new low below these. So that's my plan for Bitcoin. For the upside, I've explained it long now, first target, second target. If we lose the range low and lose this low, so if we do something like this, right, lose the low, I'm looking to short this down into four, you know, 39, whatever, 39,678 is my level, right? That's the sweep of this low over here. Okay, that would be the next target if we, this setup fails. And then we'll go again, but we are in a massive sell off here, right? So the trend is down. Don't be fooled. The trend is down. Shorts are the higher probability play, but I do think we're due for some relief. The question is, do we make another leg down and then get that relief? But either way, when we do eventually bounce, you're going to be looking for reasons to short. The market structure is bearish. We're making lower highs and lower lows on all the high, higher relevant time frames. So when we do eventually bounce, you wanna be looking for reasons to get short. Maybe we come back up here, run these highs. I'm looking to short up in here then, okay? Because the market structure is bearish. So keep that in mind, longs are counter trend. Let's get into uh, Ethereum now here. So Ethereum, I'm watching this three day order block. Ethereum, I've posted this chart a few times on Twitter. If you look at these charts next to each other, what do you see? These kind of look similar, right? where we had the move above the previous all-time high. Once we broke back below, it sold off aggressively. Move above the previous all-time high, broke back below, sold off aggressively. So you definitely don't love seeing that on Ethereum. Bitcoin would be leading in this instance because that low there, right, on Bitcoin is like this low on Ethereum, right? So if this remains bearish, I think this is the draw here, 2,600, whatever this low is, around 2,600. I think that's the draw on Ethereum. Do we bounce first or do we just sell off into there? That's the question, right? But very similar in terms of structure. We ran above the high, failed to hold it, and now we're seeing a sell-off. So Ethereum, high time frame, like Bitcoin, is bearish for now. We need to see some structure shifts to get bullish again. Right, but for now it's lower highs and lower lows. I'm watching this three day order block here. So that's this down candle. It doesn't look like a down candle, but it is. See, that's a down candle before the up move that broke market structure. We're into that area now. We've run below all the significant lows here on the three day. There's literally no other lows for us to run below until down here at 2600, which is below that three day swing low. So we have a three day swing low down here. Could this be a higher low? Maybe. Right, we technically, I believe, are in the golden ratio, a little bit below it, but we're around the seven nine retracement right now. So this is an area to look for a potential bounce for sure. So how am I playing this? Three day order block here. So I wanna look for reasons to potentially be bullish. 
the high time frame is bearish so any longs that i'm taking in here are counter trend and i'd be longing and then looking for a lower high right that's what i'm looking for i'm looking to catch the up move before the next leg down it's counter trend because the high time frame is bearish so three day bullish order block there is what we're looking at and then i zoomed into the h12 here this is kind of the, you know, what I'm looking at as potentially starting to be somewhat constructive. We've made that low on the H12, went below, back above. Zoom in again so you can see it even on the lower time frame. Made that H12 low, deviated below it. We're now back above that low. So similar to Bitcoin, I want to see, see how we ran this low here. I want to see this be a higher low now. We've made a higher high. We've run the high time frame low. We've now run the low time frame low. This is a fractal. This on the H12, the M5 would look the exact same on this. So I now want to see this trade up. I want to see this trade up above here. My first target would be into here. 33 to 3400. That would be the target. Assuming this low here, which is at 3079 holds. This is the kind of thing that I'm looking for. I want to see the low time frame shift. I always talk about this, right? The high time frame is bearish. But if we're eventually going to make a higher high on the high time frame, the low time frame is going to be in an uptrend before the high time frame shifts market structure bullish. Low time frame shifts, then the high time frame shifts. Right? So before you get a higher high on the daily, the H4 is making higher lows and higher highs. The H1 is making higher lows and higher highs. The M5 is making higher lows and higher highs. That's what we're looking for here. We're in a high time frame area of support. I've seen a higher time frame low get run. I want to see some relief, but the three day chart is just two big down candles. Maybe we're going to get a three day up candle, but how would you know, right? Maybe we, maybe we get a three day up candle next. How do we know that this is going to happen? Well, the low time frame is going to start shifting bullish first. I'm looking for reasons to get bullish here. This is my reasoning behind it, right? We've run that 12 hour low. We're into the three day order block. Bitcoin is holding the range low for now. So I want to see bullish price action. We could just reject from here right now we've come into a 12 hour order block this could just sell off right here and make new lows and if that's the case like you know the new lows below here next main low is you know kind of towards 2600 so it could get ugly but i'm looking for reasons to potentially get long and see some relief if bitcoin wants to trade down to 3900 39500 like we talked about this low at 2995 is getting run Right. So we're just taking we're taking as we come. I'm not long Ethereum personally, but it's effectively the exact same setup as what I explained on Bitcoin. It's the exact same ran the low ran this low potential higher low here. I want to see this low hold for a move above these highs. Simple as that. High time frame, though, just like Bitcoin, Ethereum's bearish. Could we see some sort of lower high? Yeah, sure. Maybe we have a move up here, right? If Bitcoin wants to go to 58K, maybe Ethereum trades back at 4,000 and then it makes a lower low. But the high time frame is bearish. So all longs you're taking are counter the high time frame trend right now. I see a lot of people want this to be the low. The thing is, is if this is the low before we make a new higher high, there's no way of knowing, right? The market structure is bearish. You have to assume that this is a lower low and we're gonna make a lower high. The only way to be wrong is if we literally make Make, you know to disprove that is if we literally make a higher high and people are gonna be like okay well it's a little late for me to know that we were going higher once we were past all-time high that's because the high time frames are not dynamic like the low time frames they move extremely slowly so this is a low and then a high on the monthly chart right we're not gonna know for sure if the monthly is flipped bearish until this low gets taken out but the clues will be on the lower time frame first. The lower time frame will start breaking market structure. You didn't know that we were gonna have this big sell off on the monthly. It's just a huge candle. But if you went down to the daily, we broke daily market structure on the 19th of November, right? And then there's the result. On the four hour chart, I mean, you could argue we broke it even earlier, actually. If you wanna include this as your swing low, right? Broke it on the 15th of November, right? On the four hour chart, this is the swing low that led to the last swing high. You could even argue it's this one, I guess, but this is an SFP. Either way, right, a day before it broke market structure on the lower time frame. So the lower time frames are going to start to shift before the high time frame, is what I'm trying to say in way too many words. Ethereum BTC, unfortunately, I thought it, like it was looking bullish to me 
initially when it was holding you know up here along the range highs but we've now made a lower low so i don't love to see that what you don't really like seeing here is we we came in we sfp this high and then we actually had a perfect breaker play right into that weekly sfp right here this is the down candle before the up move that ran that weekly high back below rejected perfectly and now we're rejecting from this order block and the high of the range and we've made a lower low so just looking at this chart the target to me would be the mid-range now on ethereum btc the reason i don't like this right is now what does this look like initially this is the exact question i just answered about what's the difference between a deviation and a market structure break i thought that this was a market structure break we came down here i wanted to see it hold the lows here and then make a higher high and then trade into here that would have been a market structure break instead it fell back within the range now it looks like a deviation so if that means this is a deviation we need to reclaim this level to be bullish again reclaim that level we're bullish again but now that we've deviated the high my next target is going to be right here right down here and into the mid range so not ideal looking like this is a fake out on the range high unfortunately so this becomes our key level to regain the range high, if we reclaim this level, I'm now bullish on FBTC again towards here. Okay. But now that we've deviated this level, we're now playing within this range here. The mid range would be the next target. Maybe we run the lows here and then we go back up. See exact. So that's the difference between a deviation and market structure break in action. We broke out. Once we broke out, I wanted to see us continue higher, but the fact that we failed to get higher, made a lower high, and now I've obviously lost this level, this becomes the key level to reclaim before we can get bullish again. Ah, my eyes. It's okay, dude. You'll be back on your feet in no time. That is not medical advice. I am not a doctor. I was like legit worried that it was never gonna come back. I was doomer. Ninja says hi and that he's a better trader than me. Hello, Ninja. He probably is. Let's be honest. He trades way more than me. He might be a better trader than me. I get more sleep than him. Let's put it that way. This guy says 26% stop loss. Yeah, okay. So this guy is an idiot. You can tell, first of all, I mean, he's holding a fucking fish in his profile picture. Very cool, dude. Cool red tank top and cool matching hat and cool fish. I don't know how many times I have to cover this, but I'm gonna cover it because this guy's not very smart. So I'll explain it for him. Hit BitBoy for us, take him down. That's for BitBoy. I don't have a big enough monitor to fit his KFC intake. That's probably the most bullish chart of all time. Most bullish charts of all time are the 10 year chart on Bitcoin, cause it's just going like this. A hundred year chart on the stock market, cause it's just going like this, but nothing beats BitBoy's. His chart, here's time. And this is KFC intake. And honestly, it's just this. It's the most bullish chart I've ever seen. You're the idiot here. You're trying to sound smart, but like you've just proved to everyone watching this stream that you don't understand risk management at all. Maybe stick to fishing, bro. I don't know. Having to talk to fucking Joe Fisherman here pissed me off immensely. Don't get it twisted. This is a downtrend. What if the 30K support fails? Then we go lower. We'll be in the 20Ks. That's what will happen. It's as simple as that. Don't overthink it, man. And then maybe you can come back and add some constructive criticism to the chat instead of just displaying to everyone that you're a fucking idiot. And all they know is this. This, right they were baptized by up only pay attention put the fish down for a second and watch here this is important he's going for the ad hominem attacks he realized he's wrong now he's just trying to call me names it's okay man i understand you're upset because i made you look dumb in front of 300 people i'm sorry that you feel that way but feel free to come and, and, and chat to me about it at the next conference i'd love to talk to you about it in person i don't really care i'm just explaining my logic this is what i do you do whatever the fuck you want to do and we can go along our merry way send neck pick there, good enough for you. I definitely will at some point. I just don't know when. I'm more just fucking spitting off the top of the dome. What the fuck is this? I don't know what that means. Man, you're so mad, I strutters. Why don't you DM me and we can we can talk this out, man. I'll try and help you. I don't know if this dump got you down, you lost all your money. Maybe the fish you caught went rotten and you couldn't sell them at the market and you can no longer feed your family. I don't know what's going on in your life. It sounds rough though, because you're on the internet trying to yell at a stranger. So I feel bad for you. Feel free to message me if you need some help, bro. Maybe I can give you a donation. You can buy a new fishing rod. Oh, bro, you're from Vancouver, Canada. I'm looking at your page right now. We live in the same city, man. Let's meet up. Let's get a beer. See if you want to talk shit in person.